Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I hope you've all been keeping well. I haven't been, unfortunately, because I had a return of the sciatica that I mentioned and some related aches and pains to go with it. I won't bore you with the details of the past couple of months, but it was quite rough to start with. I'm feeling much better now, but my body clearly needs a bit of extra help and intervention to get over the line and ensure that I can prevent things or at least reduce the risk of things repeating themselves going forward with the right exercises and habits and behaviours and things. So I've booked in to see an osteopath and we'll take things from there and I've just got to be careful, basically. And it also means I haven't been out much these past couple of months. There were two outings I did on one weekend which I think is what triggered the sciatica again. I went up to central London for the first time in nine months and had a nice walk along the south bank of the Thames in the sunshine. It was lovely to see the views down there again. I always like walking around that area. Then had a walk around my local area the next day as well which was nice in the sunshine but that coupled with the heat wave in the ensuing week as well kind of all added together and it just didn't help matters. So at the moment I'm sort of in semi-lockdown again which you know, I've been used to that the past year and a half so it doesn't really make much difference now but it will be nice when I can kind of feel better and get out there again. But if you have been out there enjoying yourselves now that restrictions have been lifted and I hope you've been safe and I hope you've been having fun and everything. But yeah, because of all that, basically what I'm going to talk about in this video as per usual is the entertainment I've been enjoying. Luckily there's been plenty to keep me distracted and entertained in addition to all the blog writing and stuff I do. So there's plenty to mention here. As always, there's a lot more detail in the blog post. These videos are only ever a summary. So go to the blog post to read more detail. There's links in the description about everything as well. And none of this is sponsored or affiliated, anything like that. These are all my own opinions as usual. So yeah, let's just crack on with it and I hope you enjoy it. So of course the big event at the moment is the Olympic Games in Tokyo and very well done to Japan for putting the event on in the first place in such difficult circumstances. It is very different this time around, the atmosphere is very different when you've got very few spectators or no spectators depending on what event you're watching. But yeah, it's still been very exciting to watch, there's still been a lot of great things going on. The opening ceremony was a very stripped back affair but it's still very nice, very respectfully done in the circumstances and they used music from video games during the athletes parade which was a nice touch. And then obviously in terms of sports I've been focusing on Team GB's efforts for Great Britain but there have been great athletes and other teams as well of course there's a lot of great talent out there as the Olympics is designed to showcase but in terms of Team GB's achievements specifically I'm not going to mention them all obviously but a few highlights for me include Tom Daly finally getting a gold medal in the diving after 20 years of doing that sport he got it in the synchronised diving with Matty Lee so that was fantastic they gave a great display there and we did very well in the swimming as well in various races we got medals which is fantastic in the gym we did well too Max Whitlock retained his title on the pommel horse and we got our first medal in the women's team gymnastics for 93 years and there were other successes in the gym as well which is great and among our various successes on the horses in the equestrian events Charlotte de Jardin became the most successful British female Olympian which is a great achievement but my favourite event so far at least when I filmed this has been the BMX cycling which is exhilarating to watch we've got gold and silver medals in the race events which is fantastic and it's thrilling to see them flying over the humps as they go around the track at speed it's quite something but then in the women's freestyle event Charlotte Worthington's display was absolutely astonishing on her first run she attempted to do a 360 backflip which no other woman has ever done in competition before it's a very dangerous trick because you don't know where you are in the air spinning around at all angles and she fell off because it is as I say very tricky to do and pull off and so you could have forgiven her for not wanting to try it again on her second run you know the American lady had a very high bar at that point but no she was determined she had the guts to go for it she nailed that 360 backflip continued around the course doing various other really impressive tricks as well and smashed it she got the gold medal and it's just absolutely fantastic so very well done to Charlotte for that I think she is one of the heroes of the Olympics without a doubt because you really show that if you have the guts to go for it you can achieve anything so very well done to her and then of course we've got the Paralympic Games to look forward to from the 24th of August to the 5th of September so hopefully they go well and there have sadly been some reports of discriminatory treatment of disabled athletes such as a lady who had to pull out because she wasn't allowed to use her own personal assistant they had to use one that was assigned to her and multiple other athletes of all sorts of different disabilities which was never really going to work very effectively so it's a great shame she had to pull out and hopefully these things can be investigated so they don't happen again we can't sweep these things under the carpet but hopefully overall the games will be a success and I wish all the competitors all the very best with it. Here in the UK Channel 4 will be covering the event once again which is great news because they've been doing a great job of that and that will continue for the 2024 games as well which is good to know and they're going to be offering not just TV coverage but also 16 live streams on their website as well so they're going to be giving very comprehensive coverage which is fantastic. And there's a great promo video as well out there which showcases the talents and diversity of the athletes and there's a bit of humour in there as well and there's an audio described version and a signed and captioned version so they've really gone out of their way to make that accessible too. So moving on from all that sporty stuff and I'll go on to documentaries next. Russell Howard Stands Up to the World on Sky was a fun look at his tour of Australia and New Zealand and mixed material from his uh, stand-up shows with various bits of footage of all the weird and wonderful people he met and all the different things he tried. So that was good fun. There are quite a few clips of that on his YouTube channel as well if you want to check that out. And then ITV have had a couple of shows looking at the lost tapes of some comedians from the old days. So Ronnie Corbett's Lost Tapes was a selection from his home movie collection which had never been released 
released by his family before so they were obviously talking about him as were celebrity fans as well it's very lovingly done and it was great to see kind of an insight into his private life and the way he interacted with his family and kids and things like that and then for Morecambe and Wise they've managed to dig out the very first show that the duo did for BBC One after they moved from BBC Two so this was a big move in their career to go into prime time on BBC One and that had recently been discovered in the loft by Eric Morecambe's son Gary so Eric's family were watching it and commenting on it during the show and celebrity fans were also watching it as well and it was lovely to see the sketches because they've never been seen on TV since the original broadcast and then over on the Yesterday channel there's been a series called Secrets of the London Underground which is fascinating looking at abandoned tube stations and disused tunnels and old history of the underground they found in the depot at the museum and various other bits and pieces it's presented by Tim Dunn who's a railway enthusiast he really knows his stuff as does Sidney Holloway from the London Transport Museum who also presents with him they're really enthusiastic and knowledgeable it really comes across well and they really kind of take you on this fascinating journey with them and if you want to dig deeper so to speak then there's the Hidden London Hangout series on the London Transport Museum's YouTube channel that you might find interesting lots of very in-depth discussions about various aspects of the underground and there's also in-person tours that they do they don't do many at the moment but they're hoping to relaunch more of their Hidden London tours later in the year so that's the kind of thing I want to do as well at some point one day and then BBC Two have had Secrets of the Museum which is a second series looking behind the scenes at the Victoria and Albert Museum so as a fan of that museum I obviously really like that series and they've got a wonderful variety of items they look after and the staff are really great at their work so yeah it's been really interesting to watch that not everything is old obviously the older stuff they have like artworks and statues and things are wonderful but there's also relatively more modern stuff as well like a lurex suit worn by Jim Lee from the glam rock band Slade and then there's the costume worn by Andrew Sachs when he played Manuel in 40 Towers there's quite a variety of things in there you know artworks and fashion and all sorts it's a great museum anyway so I'm looking forward to going back there one day because it's been a long time since I've been to any museum and then moving on to drama there's not a lot to mention here but I've been glad to see the flashback for its seventh season on Sky season six got a bit curtailed because of the pandemic so they still had to wrap up the Mirrorverse story and then they can move on to other things it's become very far-fetched these days even more so than it was to start with but it's still good fun and everything and I know it's finished in America already so don't spoil things we are a bit behind you over here as always but I do know that there's a season 8 in the works as well so that's going to continue for a little while yet which is great and yes I'm well aware of the news about Doctor Who as well I know that Jodie Whittaker and showrunner Chris Chibnall are leaving next year they'd kept it quiet until now but their plan had always been to cut and run after three series which is fair enough if that's what they want to do and it'll be interesting to see who takes over after them but before that we've got series 13 to look forward to it's going to be a shorter series because of the pandemic of course and then there'll be specials after that to finish off Jodie's run next year is the 100th anniversary of the B BBC, so they might do something special for that and then the year after that it's the 60th anniversary of Doctor Who itself so hopefully they'll do something special for that too and then moving on to comedy and the big series I've been binging on over the past few months is Whose Line Is It Anyway that's the improvisation game show where they play lots of silly games it's good fun it actually began as a short radio series in the UK just one series of six episodes and I've listened to that now because it's available on Audible to buy so it's been interesting to hear the original series that started it all off that was hosted by Clive Anderson who then went on to host the TV series on Channel 4 of course for 10 series it's been great to watch all of those again on all four and they've got every single episode apart from episode 10 of series 7 which is on youtube anyways so it's been great to see every single episode and i've also seen the comic relief specials from 1989 and 2011 on youtube as well which aren't as good as the main show but they're still interesting and fun to watch and i know there's also been a stage version at the edinburgh fringe sometimes as well which clive anderson has also hosted but of course it also made the transfer to america because ryan stars took it over there to his friend drew carey who became the host over there the drew carey series of who line isn't available on official streaming services so all you've got is low quality clips on youtube and daily motion and stuff i have seen some of those shows anyway in the past and i've watched them some of those clips again recently to remind me of it and it's all right i mean you know the games are still fun and everything but i don't think drew carey is quite as good a host as clive anderson for me anyway and drew carey also went on to host a couple of other very similar shows with the same cast as well after whose line got cancelled so he had his green screen show and Improvaganza, and a lot of the cast from whose line also appeared on another improvisation show called trust us with your life and all these kind of little separate shows only lasted one season each but they're kind of interesting to look at there's clips from all of them on youtube if you want to dig them out they're all kind of worth a little look out of curiosity there's some good moments there and obviously various cast members have appeared in other shows as well if you look on wikipedia there's a whole list of the stuff they've been in but then some years after drew carey's version of the show was cancelled the show was revived again in america on the cw network in 2013 and it's still going in that format today and i have been able to watch some of those because the dave channel here acquired 50 episodes across a few of the seasons so not 
every single episode but a decent selection of them and I've been able to watch all of those on UK TV Play which is fantastic. I still think the British series is the best but this new version is quite lively and fun. It feels much more refreshed than the uh, Drew Carey editions I think. Aisha Tyler who is the host is very upbeat. She's very capable of bantering with the performers and even gets involved in some of the games herself as and when she feels like it. And then they have a celebrity guest to come in to play a couple of the games in most shows as well. So yeah it's kind of a nice lively fun version of the show. I've been quite enjoying watching those and there are lots of clips on the show's official YouTube channel as well so there's even more material there. Hopefully if it proves to have been popular maybe Dave will acquire some more of the episodes. And the cast do get on very well with each other as well which you can see if you go to Wayne Brady's channel on YouTube. There are various live Zoom chats between the cast that went on during lockdown last year. And then there are various other videos of course on YouTube whether it be interviews or performances and stuff like that featuring various members of the cast just to recommend a couple. There's a video of Ryan Stiles interviewing Eric Idle about Eric Idle's new book that he was releasing at the time. And that's quite fun because there's a nice bit of banter between the two of them. And then there's a video of Aisha Tyler playing Cards Against Humanity with Will Wheaton and a couple of other people. It's obviously not at all safe for work and not for the easily offended but it's well worth a watch if you know what Cards Against Humanity is you will know what you're getting into. And I'd love to play that game again as well. It's been a while since I've played that. And yes there are lots of other videos out there too. Interviews with people and performances and even the Australian edition of Who's Line which you can find on Daily Motion, which isn't very good. I didn't watch much of that. I did check it out a little bit though. But yeah, I've looked through various bits and pieces and watched the bits I want to. I'm ready to move on now. So yeah, it's been interesting to kind of relive Who's Line and visit some new aspects of it that I hadn't seen before. And of course, talking of improvised comedy, we have to mention the wonderful Mischief Movie Nights one more time because they had their final ever online run this past month. I didn't see every single show this time like I did for the previous couple of runs, but I did see quite a few of them. They were hilarious as always. And they even had a studio audience this time for the first time, which added a nice bit of extra atmosphere to it. A couple of the shows were also audio described by Vocalize, so I saw one of those, and a few had sign language and captions with them, so they've made the effort to make those shows accessible as well, which is fantastic. So yeah, thank you very much to Mischief Theatre for giving us so much entertainment since December last year. It's been very much needed and appreciated, and I look forward to seeing more Mischief Theatre shows in person as and when I'm able to do so in the not-too-distant future, because there's more plays of theirs that I've yet to see. And then beyond all that, I've also been enjoying the new series of Alan Davis as yet untitled on Dave, where he talks to fellow comedians and other fun people about various random stories that they have from their lives. And there's an extended podcast of the show available on Audible now, which is completely free and it has content cut from the TV episodes. There's also been the recent series of The Last Leg, of course, and they'll be back in August as part of the Paralympics coverage. And then on Blu-ray, meanwhile, I bought the 50th anniversary edition of the original Dad's Army movie from 1971. So it features the original cast from the TV series. It's not as good as the TV series, but it's still reasonable. It still holds up reasonably well. And it's been remastered, so it looks and sounds as good as it possibly can in this day and age. There's an interesting booklet in there with it as well about how the film was made and everything. The extras on the Blu-ray are very disappointing though. There's just a trailer and a couple of very short pathy newsreels about the Home Guard. But the booklet's interesting and it's nice to have the film in good quality. And then I also bought the new box set of Outnumbered on DVD as well and that's a more modern sitcom about family life. And I already had that on DVD but I got this new set because it has the 2016 Christmas special, the final episode which had never been released on DVD before. And it's got all the extras from the old discs as well so I haven't lost anything in that way. And if you don't know the show it's basically a sitcom about family life. You've got this mother and father who are outnumbered by their three children who they have to try and look after and it's all about the everyday struggles and situations that every family goes through and it's relatively unusual sitcom wise in that it doesn't have a laugh track and it's also semi-improvised so the adults get given scripts but the kids are just given general guidance and instructions and that allows them to act much more naturally and freely and say the things that kids naturally say and it works very well so yeah it's a good fun sitcom that. So then finally moving on to music and I bought Def Leppard's third box set of their albums which has been a great way for me to build up my Leopard collection. So this box set includes X, Yeah, which is a cover album, and songs from the Sparkle Lounge, plus there's a disc of B-sides, and then two further discs of cover songs recorded in the studio and in concerts. There's a lovely selection of things there. And then I also bought the Blu-ray box set for A Bigger Bang, live on Copacabana Beach by the Rolling Stones. This is a huge free show that they did for an audience of one and a half million people, which is also broadcast across Brazil and worldwide. This show was on the old Biggest Bang DVD set, which I'm still keeping because it's got other shows on there as well. But this new version has been re-edited, remixed, and remastered, and has four tracks that weren't in the original release. And I got the four disc box set because there are various editions of this that have been released which has an extra show on Blu-ray from Salt Lake City from the same tour and two audio CDs containing the Copacabana show. And it's all encased in a lovely big hardback book with big photos and information about the shows and everything so it's a very nice set overall. But I have to mention my favourite band Queen as always of course and I recently posted the first part of my review of their News of the World album as part of my Queen at 50 series celebrating their 50th anniversary so I was looking at you know how the album was created and the cover artwork and the 40th anniversary 
anniversary box set that was released and related documentaries and interviews. And then I went into great detail about the first two tracks, We Will Rock You and We Are The Champions, because there's a huge amount to write about those tracks, as you can imagine, given their popularity and success and everything. So go and check that out if you're into Queen. I have started working on the second part of my review as well, which will deal with all the other tracks on the album. It's been a bit delayed because of my health issues and stuff, but I have made a start on it, so that'll keep me busy for a while. But if you need a further fix of Queen's 50th anniversary celebrations, then check out their Queen The Greatest series on their YouTube channel, which is a very interesting series of videos that they're releasing over the course of a year. And then there was also the new reissue of Brian May's first solo album, Back to the Light, coming out on 6th of August in various formats. So I'm going to be getting that. And I'll mention that in my next favourites post and then probably do a thorough review of that later on once he's re-released all his material because he's doing a gold series of reissues of all his solo work, which is fantastic because it hasn't been released for ages. I have got his albums already, but it'd be nice to have these remastered versions all the bonus tracks and everything. And then elsewhere on YouTube is also worth mentioning a great supergroup performance of Save Me that was posted in June in support of Brian May's Save Me Trust and that features guest appearances by Kerry Ellis and Tyler Warren amongst other people. That's quite fun to watch. And then lastly on the music front there's a song called Can't Wait by a group called Stand Up for the NHS and this is a charity single which you can download in the age of NHS charities together featuring a whole load of famous comedians some of whom are former doctors and nurses themselves like Harry Hill and Joe Brand and others who have had relatives in the NHS like Tim Vine whose mum was a GP receptionist and loads of other comedians are in there as well so it's a fun song for a great cause and that's it that concludes my bumper roundup for the past couple of months I hope you found that interesting and enjoyable as usual in August I haven't got a huge amount planned of course because I need to get my health issues sorted out first but I hope I can get out and about a little bit at least as the Paralympics as I've said to look forward to so that should be really good I know what series I'm going to move on to next having finished Who's Line and there's a few films and other bits and pieces that I kind of have in mind to watch in the month ahead so I've got plenty to keep me entertained and there's also my blog, of course. I've got the new Queen post I'm working on for the next part of the News of the World album. I'm still posting my old journal post as well. I very recently posted a special journal post looking back at a holiday in Spain from 2007 with lots of photos and things. So do go and check all that stuff out as well. And yeah, I will hopefully see you again next month for my next favourites video. Hopefully it won't be two months this time. So yeah, please continue you know, being safe. Take care of yourselves. And thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe as per usual. And I will see you for another video very soon. Bye.